The Rune Factory series is probably one of the most unique RPG series out there. It is a mix of Marvelous's Story of Seasons series with fantasy RPG elements, where you'll be clearing out dungeons and engaging with some interesting world building and characters. As of recording this video, there are currently seven Rune Factory titles, and I'm often asked, which entry is the best Rune Factory title to start with? I guess the best place to start is with the basics, huh? The first three numbered Rune Factory games were available on the Nintendo DS, and well, only one of them is really worth playing. Rune Factory 1 is the definition of aging like buttermilk, and I have a full video on that game that you can watch, but a quick recap is pretty much Rune Factory 1 has a good cast of characters that the game does nothing with, the dungeon crawling is pretty okay, and the farming is as basic as basic can be. So if you're starting here and working your way up, you'll definitely be starting from zero. Rune Factory 2. I don't have a video on that one yet. I will one day, I promise. But would you believe me that Rune Factory 2 manages to fix a lot of the shortcomings of the first game, yet introduces dozens of newer ones? Rune Factory 2, out of all of the Rune Factory titles, really feels like it's trying to do something, but it never really accomplishes it. And you think Story of Seasons has boated tutorials? Well, get this, the entire introductory 10 to 20 hours of this game is just one overblown tutorial. I wish I was kidding, but the game really doesn't start until you begin the quote unquote second generation of the game. I won't dive much more into this here, as there is so much more I can talk about what this game does wrong, but that would be best left up to my eventual Rune Factory 2 video, right? But overall, I could not recommend starting with Rune Factory 2 on any planet, any universe, or any timeline. Rune Factory 3, another game I plan to make a video on. I'm starting to notice a trend here. Well, regardless, Rune Factory 3 is, in my opinion, the first good Rune Factory game in the numbered series so far. A lot of the elements introduced in later Rune Factory titles are introduced here, along with the structure of a lot of future games. Ironically, Rune Factory 3 feels more like the first game than the actual first game. You have a very interesting cast of lovable characters with their own good and unique quirks, some pretty interesting story implications, and some pretty solid dungeons to boot. The only real problem with starting with Rune Factory 3 is that it'll be much harder to go back to play the first two games. But honestly, do you really want to? Rune Factory 4, arguably the peak of the series, and with Rune Factory 4 Special, you can play this on your choice of Switch, PS4, Xbox, or PC, so you are no longer trapped to the 3DS to try this game. Rune Factory 4 is such a unique experience. It has such a level of depth that is not apparent when you first start this game, which is what I feel like makes this game, well, special. If you want to play this game at a casual rate and take things slow and steady, you can do that. If you want to min-max things and all of your skills and equipment that you have, go nuts. Sure, other Rune Factory games had this complexity, but 4 is where it truly hits its stride, thus creating a game that offers enough for veterans to sink their teeth into, but never truly overwhelming newer players who just want a relaxed paced experience. If you want to know more about Rune Factory 4 Special, well, good news for you, I have a video for that that should be popping up around here somewhere. The only real problem I can think about with starting with Rune Factory 4 Special is, well, the same about starting with Rune Factory 3. If you want to start with this one and work your way backwards, it will be much, much more noticeable than if you started with Rune Factory 3. I hopped right into the first Rune Factory after sinking hundreds of hours into 4, and man, I felt like I was in hell. But like I said about starting with Rune Factory 3, is it really a bad thing to miss out in the first two games? Unless you're a real lore junkie, you really aren't missing much, and even then, most of the lore established in the first two games is often regurgitated in later games, so you really aren't missing out on much. Now, before Rune Factory 5, there were two other home console games in this series, Rune Factory Frontier and Rune Factory Tides of Destiny. Rune Factory Frontier was the third Rune Factory game made and was an alternate story to the original, where the protagonist Raguna just, well, runs off from his original story and replants his life in another town. There are a few characters from the original that are transplanted into here, but I would not call this game a remake. In fact, I know many people who would hurt me if I dared call this a remake. So let's just look at it as a, well, alternate reality or a another episode type deal. For the first console entry into the series, Rune Factory Frontier honestly holds up pretty well. That said, there are a few choices that can hold back your enjoyment, such as the dreaded Rooney system that can really throw your farming plans for a loop. Honestly, Rune Factory Frontier was always a game I wished spearheaded the future of this series, but Rune Factory 3 was a good follow-up game regardless. Starting here would give you an issue as it plays so much differently from the other mainline entries, but ironically it would give you a good feeling for how Rune Factory 5 plays. 
Now there is Rune Factory Tides of Destiny. This game is very different from Frontier, as for one, you don't play as an amnesiac, and second, it plays more like an action role-playing game than a traditional Rune Factory title. It is a very interesting direction for the series to take. If you were to start here, you wouldn't have any real directions to springboard into. But if you're more into the action part of these games and not so much of the farming, this game may be the right spot for you. Now we end on Rune Factory 5, the first mainline entry in the series in almost 10 years. Like I mentioned earlier, this game will feel and play much more like Rune Factory Frontier than it did of Rune Factory 4. A lot of processes were also streamlined a bit com coming in from Rune Factory 4 as well, and from what I've played, it is much more newcomer friendly than most of the previous entries noted on this list. If you wanted to have the feeling of playing a full 3D Rune Factory title but don't want to try and hunt down a pre-owned copy of Frontier, then honestly, this game is your next best bet. For those wanting to try out the series for the first time, I can fully recommend starting with Rune Factory 5 over any other entry in this series, as not only are you getting the newest experience, you are also getting the first game in the new direction of this series. The old days of handheld Rune Factory are more or less dead, and the direction this series will probably go will be much closer to this and Frontier. So there you have it, Rune Factory 5 is no doubt the best place to start the series with. However, for those of you lacking a Nintendo Switch, Rune Factory 4 Special is probably the next best option to go with. Both games are newcomer friendly, but 4 does offer a much more satisfying experience if you take the time to master everything the game has to offer. That said, I found myself enjoying 5 much more than any of the other previous games I played, so take that as what you will. And who knows, maybe Exeter will work their porting magic in the future and bring the older games to PC, and maybe Rune Factory 5 may go multi-platform one day like Rune Factory 4 Special. If you have any comments or questions for me, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you. What Rune Factory game was your first if you're not new to the series, and if you are, which game do you think you'll be starting with? I would love to hear what you have to say. And if you're new to my channel finding out for the first time through this video, hey, be sure to subscribe for future reviews, commentaries, and more. And also go follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash gammapt to watch me play games like this. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching.